How's it going, everybody? They're doing a PS4 game collection here today. I got 39 games here. I'm not counting. I have a few digital, but it's mostly kind of indie stuff. Um, but I don't know if I'm actually going to get any more for the PS4 just because I'm going to get the PS5. If there's something good going around with the deals next week, there's maybe a hack of 100. I might grab it next week. If not, I'm going to probably wait till about January, February next year because I know the second part of Final Fantasy comes out, Final Fantasy VII Remake comes out in February. So I might just wait and finish up some games I want to finish up and get into it. But anyway, I'm going to start with these games that I still have sealed. <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima, director's cut. This has all the, uh, I guess, an expansion pack on here and stuff. This is a game that I'm going to wait to play, I think, until I get the PS5. It is, but you can throw it in there. I think you might have to pay. Yeah. I think it's like 10 bucks or something. You have to pay to do the upgrade. So I might just do that. Because I heard this is a, a sizable game, so I don't know if I want to deal with that undertaking, but everybody says it's awesome. One of the best for the system. Mozart Requiem. This is one I had gotten for Christmas. Um, it was only 10 bucks, I think, at the time. It's like a point-and-click type game, so I wanted it, but it's still sealed. Tales of Zestaria. Same thing, this was kind of cheap on Amazon. So I grabbed it. Part of the Tales series. Those games are fun. I have a couple of them for the PS4. And I have a Tales of, Tales of Vesperia, whatever edition. It originally came out on the 360, I believe. Mankind Divided, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, Day One Edition. This was another one that my fiance got me for Christmas. She got me a bunch of games. She just went onto my wish list and grabbed it. This one I had put on there because I've played and beaten this game and it's awesome. And I think it was like six or seven bucks. I was like, maybe I, I play it again at some point to experience it fully again. That's what's the kind of nice thing about if you happen to have both systems. You can like maybe play a game on it, one of them. A couple years later, you pick it up again. It's almost like a fresh new experience again because it, even though you're, you can literally just replay it on the same system, but it's like a different vibe. I don't know. This game's awesome though. It's uh, this is Adam Jensen using this one, just like Human Revolution. He was not in a Admissible War or Conspiracy. I think this might actually no Human Revolution might chronologically be the first one and then this one and then it goes the other ones I forget really cool game though you get some choice in there it's a first person game you get all different upgrades and stuff you're by you're in the in human revolution you're like a security officer and you get blown to bits and they rebuild you as a robot essentially almost a full robot but you upgrade your body parts and shit it's, it's, it's a cool game it has a cool look to it has a cool futuristic look to it I know cyberpunk probably has a similar look I like that look. I always like that look in games and movies as well. Song of Horror. Horror game that I had on my list. I can't say I grabbed it. I haven't opened it yet. I can almost tell this is probably going to be one of those games where like five years from now it's selling for like 80 bucks, 100 bucks. <laughs> Stranding's the last sealed one, I believe. This is another one I might just screw around with on the PS5. I don't know. Um, I, it, I heard it was cool from some people, and then other people like it's just like a walking simulator, which I don't mind personally. I kind of like those games, but I'm sure it's story heavy. It's a Kojima game. I don't know how off the rails it gets like the Metal Gears do. <sighs> I've talked about it in the past, I think hell of a game maker, but I 
think is the stories are a little overrated, especially in the Metal Gear universe, where it's like it gets so ridiculous to where he he's like has to fill in things from the original game on the NES because he decided to bring Big Boss back and he was blown apart. But you know, we used parts of Solidus and we remodeled. It. It's like get the hell out of here. It's cool and you like seeing it, but you're like. Mm. Persona 5 Strikers. This was actually sealed. I actually opened this today because the disc was rattling around in there and it was annoying me. Um, I think this is like a different combat than the regular Persona 5. I don't know, but it was cheap when I got it. Uncharted Code. The Ultimate Code? No, it's the Nathan Drake Collection. Sorry. I got this because I wanted to replay the, the original, which I, I started to replay. And I actually wanted to play 3 again because I only played 3 through 3 once on the PS3. And that was a, a while back. The first one's still my favorite, even with 4. 4 is in here somewhere. I should have it next to this one. but And I still have to get the... Uh, actually, maybe I'll, that'll be like the 40th game I get is the, uh, the side story with was it, Chloe and uh, Nadine. I think, I forget what it's called, but it, is, it has its own disc, it's like a standalone thing. I know it's not like as long, but I could, maybe I'll pick that up, because I love the Uncharted. The first one's still my favorite, um, even though the other ones are technically, you know, it's like the Dead Rising situation. It's not the best game in the series, but it's my favorite game in the series. Nathan Drake's classic character, obviously, uh, you know, he's a mass murderer of the highest level <laughs> they actually mentioned in the second one the bad guys like how many people have you just killed like in the last 24 hours it's like probably 5,000 <laughs> and listen you're in a shootout show so bad but listen I could have just knocked dudes out in this game I don't think you have an option to just knock a dude down he just snaps their neck when you get up behind him so or throws him off a cliff come on now <laughs> King's Bounty 2 I'd pick this up I, this would have been a pickup video <clears throat> um with, I think, actually the receipt's still in here. I got this in May with the order. I got in 1886. The main reason I got this is because it was cheap and I loved the King's Bounty on the Genesis back in the day. I think they have other ones on the PC. I've seen them on Steam, actually. And I'm like, I'm grabbing it. It's like a strategy type game. <clears throat> you build up units and stuff. I don't know if it's similar in this one, but I don't know if I'll ever end up playing it. I think it didn't review too well. If anyone's actually played that, let me know how it is. <clears throat> Horizon Zero Dawn, haven't played it yet. This is one of the earlier ones I got when I was just grabbing games. Admittedly... Admittedly, I picked up a bunch of games. I probably shouldn't have. I was going nuts. I was like, oh, I got a PS4 now. I'm going to just buy a bunch of games, and I'm not going to be able to play them all. A lot of people like this game, though, open world. Fighting these kind of robot-looking dinosaur things, I guess. I forget the woman's name you play as. And there's the second one as well. Sackboy, A Big Adventure. My fiancé and I played through this. Really fun game, not overly challenging. There were some parts that were tough, but you know, we when you go to collect all your items or whatever, do everything at a level, it gets a bit tougher. There's some levels that were annoying, but had a nice look. It was fun to play. This is obviously the little big planet games. I, this was not. I don't think you build worlds in this one. I can't remember. No, the other ones are like platformers, but you can like build your own stuff. I think. Really cool game though. Last of Us Remastered. Picked it up because I wanted to play it again. I wanted to actually play the DLC, which I only played briefly and did not complete. It's awesome. It's Last of Us, Joel, Ellie. The Wasteland, The Last of Us, even though there's a shit ton of people. <clears throat> um, I mean, this one's just remastered. I don't know, it doesn't look much better. Like I said, I wanted to play it. It's, it's a great game. Um, 
I want to actually, when I get PS5, I want to pick up the full remake they did of this one, because I think they added sections to that one. Let me know if you played that, and I think they added, like, things that were not in this at all. And uh, Last of Us Part Two, the, uh... That was a two-disker. The Love It or Hate It game for people, I personally loved it. I th thought it was amazing, just like the first one. You know, I kind of put it above the first one, and then I play, replayed the first one again. I'm like, eh, yeah, I'm kind of feeling the first one a little better. Because you have the whole Joel Ellie dynamic of them getting to know each other, and, and their characters progressing throughout the game, their relationship. This one's awesome, too. I, spoilers here, I enjoyed Abby. I thought she was fine. Honestly, it, it, in my honest opinion, maybe <clears throat> nobody thinks this, but honestly... I enjoyed Abby more than Ellie. I thought Ellie was annoying as shit at parts in this game, to be completely honest with you. Although Dina was... <laughs> I think she calls Dina a burn at one point. <laughs> Ellie. It's pretty much the game is just somebody's got to stop the cycle of revenge because that's everybody's trying to do revenge, revenge, and eventually, spoilers, Ellie does. I liked Abby's character. Like I said, I think Abby's character was... <laughs> I don't know if she's the better character, but she's less in, like, I don't know, for some reason, there's parts in this game where Ellie was annoying. And they introduce, uh, was it the Scars in this one? They, I think they might have been talked about in the other one, I can't remember, maybe they weren't. Um, actually, they probably weren't in the first game. If they appear and you have other stuff, and then Abby meets another character. Ellie's hanging out with Dina and the other guy, Joel's brother, is in it as well. It's great. It looks fantastic. It, and the gameplay, even if you're not into the story, the gameplay is still great, and the graphics are still great. And you see some, like, towards the end especially, you see some different environments, which is nice. Not for long, but... I don't know. I love both of the games, to be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> Hello, neighbor. This is a garage sale pickup. You would have seen. I haven't played it. by the people who made Until Dawn, The Quarry, the yeah, Dark Pictures games. I picked that up because it's like that. I have not played it yet. I know you have to do the phone linkage thing. I have not played it yet. I actually do want to get around to playing it. Because mm. I like these kind of games. Order 1886. Cool game that I was playing a good amount of. This was a launch title, I believe. I could be wrong. But I thought it was a launch title. Um, and when I popped this game in, now this game, was it 2013? I know the stickers. 2015. So this was not, this was not a launch game. <laughs> this was not even close to a launch game then, because right, the PS4 came out in 2013. Those systems came out, right? So this was not close to a launch game, I take that back. Um, this game still looks amazing graphically, like holy shit, I remember when I threw it in, I was like, my god, this looks like... It's cool though, it's like werewolves and stuff like that. You're part of the order and you gotta take them out. I think you get framed for something at first and then... I forget what I was doing. Combat's cool. I gotta go back to that. Neo picked it up because it was five bucks. Haven't played it. People told me it's kind of like a, I guess a Dark Soulish type game, um, made by Team Ninja. Um, like I said I have not played it. Like I said, it was five dollars, so I stupidly grabbed it because I just buy games and they're cheap. Callisto Protocol, played some of this, it's cool, combat, you have to get used to it, um, it's made by people who made Dead Space, so it's very much like Dead Space, uh, who's the main guy, he's an actor, it's Josh Dumal, it might be, it's cool, look great, you know, there's the creatures in there, they should get put in prison, and that's when shit starts happening, caught doing something and they just grab you. The Last 
Guardian. This one I got at the GameStop, and I was like, I just wanted it because it was like hard to find at that point. And I think like it was ten or twelve dollars used, and it was selling for more online. But you could tell the mat the uh, artwork is ripped. It looks like a puzzle almost, but it's about the same people. Eco, Ico, Shadow of Colossus. Looks cool, has such a cool look to it, and you're hanging out with the, I forget what he calls the thing. You're the kid, and you hang out with this thing. And it's like puzzles types that you gotta find ways to get around, stuff like that. It's Uncharted 4. Awesome game. Um, looks phenomenal. And it's Uncharted, I mean, if you're into the, you're gonna love it. Uh, it's the usual type stuff. <clears throat> story's decent, it's not, you know, basic type stuff, all these games have like some kind of movie type set piece scene, the first one has that, you're going up the river and using the grenade launcher, and stuff, and uh, the second one has the, uh, the third one has the plane scene, which they used in the movie, this one has a scene where you're like, I think you're on a truck and you're following a convoy or something, what was the second game, oh, the second one was, the second one was the train, this one's awesome though, it's uncharted, it looks great, plays great. Nathan's killing as many people as possible as always. He doesn't tell his kid that though. <clears throat> Joe Mac. I got this because I loved the uh, Super Nintendo game. The first one, I never played the second. Honestly, this game was frustrating as shit. It comes with a keychain and stuff. Stickers and the like. I just wasn't into it. I didn't like the way it played. It was it felt sluggish. I don't know. It looked cool. It had a nice look to it, but what I played, I was just like, no. I lost judgment. I haven't played it. I did. This is another one I opened because the disc was rattling around. It just annoys me. This is another one I might wait for the PS5. Resident Evil 4. Incredible. I mean, the original was incredible. The remake is better because you can move and shoot in this one. Um, just a fantastic. Just a. It's just a great, great game. It really is. It's a great action game, but it still has enough survival horror in it to be great at that too. It's not scary, but it has the look. There's some good, kind of creepyish areas you're in and stuff like that. Doesn't I mean the Resident Evils except yeah, seven and eight. Seven especially did it. Seven and eight are the creepiest for me, like Resident Evils. And then uh, Revelations two actually was pretty creepy too, but five took this one to another level where the survival horror kinda took a back seat, mostly action, and then six it was just like here's just an action movie, pretty much. But uh you're Leon, you gotta save the president's daughter. And like I said in my review of this, I think the uh, the character models in this game are it just it, for me, I don't know why they just looked so good. It's a great game, and it's got the mercenaries mode like all the other. Well, this is the first one when the original came out. That was the first one that mercenaries mode. I think. Cuckoo's Lost Pets. My fiance wanted this. It's we thought it was gonna be like a sack boy or like a Mario type game, and it is, but it's just it's not that great. Like it doesn't play well. Um, sometimes the game's extremely colorful, and sometimes you can't even tell what the hell you're doing. But, not really a fan of this one. Um, Kena, Kena, Bridge of Spirits. Played a little bit of this. I got this because it looked cool, and it was pretty fun from what I played. Uh, it's like... This is almost like a throwback to like a PS2 game, which I can appreciate sometimes of that era. Not just the PS2, but that era of games. This, I know a lot of you said that the computer making the sound is just kind of like a white noise, but it, when I hear it, it like annoys the shit out of me because it like interrupts what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, it looks really nice too. This is another one that's got a PS5 upgrade available. So if anything, I could pop some of these games in that I have. It's like a built-in PS5 collection. Got to pay a couple bucks. I think it's ten or something. 
Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. This came with uh, Hello Neighbor at that garage sale. I played this on the Xbox One. It's the three games remastered. Well, actually, they're remade. They're not remastered. They're fully remade. Now, Crash Crash 2. Um, Cortex Strikes Back and then Warped. They're fun. They are challenging. They're fun. They look nice. Um, I might keep this one and play through them again. Maybe for trophies or something, but... If into Crash, you're gonna love that. Oh, so. uh, Zero Time Dilemma. This is in the Zero Escape series, right? There's 999, and then there's a Virtue's Last Reward. There is there a fourth one? It's a cool game. You wake up with these strangers, and you gotta figure out how to get out of rooms and stuff. The funny thing in, in, is in this... It's actually a thing where the guy is like, oh, you know, if you all choose, you can leave. And then you actually leave right in the beginning of the game. That's one of the endings. You got to figure out things. You got to find stuff, figure out puzzles and stuff. It's like a graphic novel with with some gameplay in there. This is originally a Vita game. It was on the PS3 as well. I think it was originally a Vita game. Colossus. This is also a straight-up remake, I believe. Um, this game's awesome. Uh, same people, like I said, Last Guardian, Ico. Um, you play this kid, and you gotta, you gotta see your, your wife. I guess your wife or girlfriend. She's asleep, and this guy tells you this like God's type things. Like you gotta kill these uh, Colossus, and then she'll awaken. And every time you kill one, you get sicker. It seems. And uh, it looks good. Once again, a great look. All the Colossi, whatever they call them. Colossus. I don't know if they just call them Colossus or they call them something else. Look fantastic. And you gotta climb up them and hold on and stuff like that and stab them in their strategic points. You stab them. And there's, they do different things. Some are flying ones, some are in the water. You gotta climb up a sword, stuff like that. Um, and spoilers here. Uh, the kicker is at the end you kill all these things your girlfriend does not come back you essentially just die because the god thing was lying to you <laughs> and like the army or something comes in it's like at the end of the game it's literally you just fading away <laughs> a downer of an ending hell of a game though it has such a cool look and art style and the gameplay is fun you're literally it's just literally a boss battle game essentially you, just, you gotta find him you're on your horse you find him and there's some collectibles to get. Uh, Tales of Basaria. This is another one I picked up uh, from GameStop. I think it was like ten or twelve dollars. Um, part of the Tales series. I've not played it, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pick some of these games up just to have them, and then get around to maybe playing them, but probably not. Stray. I've talked about this game. I enjoyed the shit out of it. I'm a cat person. I didn't like it. There's a cat back there. Um, listen, if the game sucked to me, I wouldn't have liked it, but it was a nice change of pace. A little too short. Um, this came with the little cards. Art cards. Um, the gameplay's fun. It's a laid-back game. There's some enemies at points that you got to deal with. You're trying to find stuff for these robots, or you fall, you're hanging out with the other cats, you fall into this, this thing. It's like a city that was built because of what happened on the outside world. It's like sealed off. And I guess something happened in there. The virus, or whatever the hell it was, got in there, and then they, they had robots, and now the robots are just the only ones left. And you hang out with this little guy who put his, his mind into a little robot. And you jump around, you do all types of cat stuff. You go to sleep, you knock stuff down, and you scratch, and gotta find stuff it's just honestly it was a nice change of pace and that's one of the main reasons i liked it, it was just a laid-back kind of game that i could play and enjoy it probably could have been a little longer but not by much because admittedly the gameplay is gonna this is this isn't a game you want to play for 15 20 hours it's just not it wasn't short it might have been like seven or eight hours i feel i liked it Until dawn. Um, 
cool game. Uh, I didn't, had not played this one. Came out. I think this is the first one. They I don't know like the first one of these kind of games that they did. Um, super massive games. That's who it is. Really cool. Rami Malek is in this one. This is before he like really started to get popular. So it's Hayden Panettiere and a couple other recognizable people. It's cool. These are like point and click games, but you have more gameplay and you have to make choices. All your characters can die. All of them could live. Some could die. I think. I think I had three survive. I lost uh, Hayden Panettiere at the end. I didn't do a breathing thing. Right. It's a lot of button pressing. I think I lost two at the end. I can't remember. Um, I think I had three or four, maybe. I don't know, but cool game. It looks another game that looks fantastic, and this one's actually legitimately pretty creepy, which is nice. We got a war. Still have to beat it. I'm towards the end. I have to beat it before I get the Ragnarok PS5. It's awesome. I mean, you're Kratos again. Now you're in the you're with the the Norse gods or whatever, and uh, looks amazing. The gameplay is great as always. You have your uh, you have this axe thing here. And you have, uh, like, you eventually get your chains back, which is kind of a cool scene. He's like, I gotta, I know what I gotta do. They're, like, hidden because he's pretending, like, you know, he's, he's making it seem like he's not a god. But then some of the, uh, these gods find out who you are and uh, your kid here, Atreus. Um, but you get your, your uh, blades back. And that's an awesome scene. He digs him up, and then, and then Athena's ghost appears. He's like, I'm done talking to you. <laughs> He's Kratos. He's still a fucking grumpy uh, old fuck. <laughs> Which I guess he would be. And like I said, the gameplay is awesome. Graphically, it looks great. I did a gameplay video of this, I believe. And obviously, the other ones are great, too. Three, two, one. I liked... Um, I never played the ones on the PSP. I think they actually brought them over to the PS3 in a collection. What was the other one? There was one that a different studio made, I think. Oh, it was a prequel one. It was also on the PS3. It was great. What was that one called? I got I to gotta look this up. Um, Ascension was it called? It was called Ascension. Nice. It was cool. I liked it actually quite a bit. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Ratchet and Clank. I did a gameplay of this. It's Ratchet and Clank. It looks amazing. That's the first game I kind of want to get when I get the PS4. Is, is uh, a Rift Apart. Is it called the Rift Apart? These games look awesome. They look like, and they did make a movie on this at some point. But. It looks great. You get all the cool... It's Insomniac, so you get all the cool weapons and stuff. You go to cool planets and shit. It's, it can be funny at times. Sometimes it's kind of cheesy. It's humor, but, you know, there's other times where it's... It'll get me to laugh, but... It's Ratchet and Clank. Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. Also PS5 grade, upgrade available. I played some of this. It's... I think this was made by Team Ninja. Yes, it was. So this is more like the other kind of games they do in Neo and stuff like that. It's not a traditional Final Fantasy. Um, you're, this is a actually a prequel to the first Final Fantasy on the Nintendo. And apparently you use the bad guy, which I thought was kind of cool. Who becomes the bad guy? I think you become Garland. Um, it looked cool. Uh, admittedly, the combat was a little... Eh, I have to play more of it. I actually don't know why I got it. I think I was on a Final Fantasy kick or something. I'm gonna be the show 21. Haven't played it. Oh, I apologize for that noise that popped up. Um, this is the other one that I'd gotten with.
the other two games, the neighbor, Hello Neighbor and Crash Insane Trilogy, I've not played it yet. Figured, why not have a sport game, a, ba a baseball game? Another site, I picked this up for my fiance, she has not played it yet. You use a, I think you're a blind girl. Yes, you lost your sight in the cat team up. Thought you'd like it, she hasn't played it yet though. <laughs> Finish these last three off here. Kill Zone, Kill Zone Shadowfall. Another amazing looking game. Pretty cool shooter. I did not beat it, but I played some of it. It was fun, you know. I kind of, I'm losing a little bit of my um, desire or whatever to play shooters, honestly. But this was fun. But I didn't play any multiplayer or anything. But like I said, it looked nice and it played pretty well, also. Tales of Arise. This is the last game I had gotten. Five bucks, seventy-five percent off at uh, GameStop. It's part of the Tales series. It's fun. I played some of it. The combat's always fun in these games. It has the cool kind of anime look, and the cutscenes and stuff. Environments are all nice. I forget what the story is in this one. This woman here is that her? I think the you use the guy, and the, I think we'll use everybody in the combat. I think if you want to. The woman there has some kind of, I don't know, warring factions and crap. And the last one is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I actually started playing this again last night, and I'm up to, I think I'm, I'm going on to Chapter 18, so I'm thinking I'm going to fight Sephiroth, I guess, or whoever, Hojo. I don't know who the end boss is. Like I said, I played this back in the day, and I don't know if they changed things up. This game's awesome. This is a proper remake. It's awesome. They changed things up. The combat now is different than it was in the original. It's not turn-based anymore. You're running around attacking as much as you please, but you have to fill up little meters to do spells and use items and use special abilities. Um, looks great. This is another one. I think that's PS5 upgradable. Maybe not. It doesn't say it, but let's come out. 2020. Um, I want to play the second part though. That's why I'm like, I'm gonna have to get a PS5 by then because that one I know you get into the actual open world. This one takes all place in the Midgard and the city, the Mako, the people, Mako, the people are using. They're like bleeding the planet dry. Um, I've seen several a few times. Um, I know kind of the ins and outs of the story of this game. Those are the characters you use. Aerith, Cloud, Barrett, and Tifa. I guess I just met... I guess he was playable in the original Red 13, the lion guy. He's a lion. He's literally just like a lion or some kind of cat. And uh, he's just he just fights with you. You don't control him. I met him briefly before. And he's just popping around. And he'll pop some things out when you tell him to do this little thing. He'll hit a switch and you can get across... It's awesome, those cool mini games in here. It's really fun. Honestly, I still kind of want to play the original at some point. I only played a few hours of the original, and uh, I have it for the PlayStation One. It's also on the PlayStation Mini, and you can get it in like ten thousand other places now. That used to be like a super sought after game. You know, the copy I have would still sell for probably twenty five bucks, but you know, even back like ten years ago, you could sell that for almost double it, but. I think because it was re-released 600 times that it doesn't have the value once it once did but this game's awesome combat is fun though as well but yeah that is my uh, PS4 game collection I figured I'd do it I don't know if I'm going to be getting any more I might get like one or two more games so whatever you know because I kind of want to finish this up God of War like stuff like Ghost of Tsushima and some of these other games, I'll just hold on to them. Like, you know what? Get a PS5, pop them in, maybe pay for the upgrade, and and do that. But yeah, um, thanks for checking this out, and have a good day.